Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel. Today I'm going to show you how to play a solo on Autumn Leaves. What I'm not going to do today is to show you how to play the melody, but we're going to concentrate on finding easy ways to play a solo over autumn leaves. Take a look at the chords and you'll see there's quite a lot of chords. It changes uh, at least one chord every bar. And we've got a few potentially tricky ones such as F sharp minor 7 flat 5, B7 flat 9, and a, a quite fast rundown in the next to the last line. So if you were taking this bar by bar, you might think this is going to be a pretty tricky one. But in fact, Autumn Leaves is a pretty straightforward one. And I'm going to show, show you some really easy ways to approach it. So first of all, to get to grips with the chord sequence, let's just play through the roots. Uh, either long notes or chopped um, four to the bar. So that's useful just really for orientating yourself, um, no use whatsoever for actually soloing. Um, it could be useful if you uh, wanted to play backing, if you went to something like... Um, well that's something for uh, another lesson I think. So uh, if you're going to uh, improvise then what's the easiest way to approach it? Um, let's look at... Um, playing just the natural minor scale. So that would be, we're in the key of E minor, and incidentally, it can be slightly tricky working that out because looking at the first eight chords, you don't reach an E minor till the uh, seventh bar. Uh, so it's very easy to think this is going to be an A minor, because <laughs> it starts on an A minor seven, but it's not, it's an E minor. So the natural minor scale, D you'll notice is a, a D natural. So let's just hear that scale all the way through and see what it sounds like. So that's nothing if not easy. Um, if you are listening carefully to the chords as you are playing, you'll notice there's one thing that's not quite right about that, even though it mostly sounds okay. When you get to the B7 chord, you are happily playing a D natural note, when really it's begging for a, a D sharp, um, which will be the third of that B7. So, uh, once every eight bars, that's going to sound uh, slightly wrong. 
Let's just um, play again, and I'll play the um, natural minor again, but whenever we hit that B7, I'm going to play a D sharp. you'll see that the, um, the B sharp, the D sharp rather, also fits well with the F sharp minor 7 flat 5 which comes before it. Let's just look at F sharp minor 7 flat 5. That's F sharp. That's the minor note, the third. That's the fifth. But we're flattening that. So it's... That's F sharp minor 7 flat 5, but really you can just think of it as an F sharp minor. Uh, but that fits neatly with the B7 and the E minor um, playing the harmonic minor scale. So the harmonic minor scale is this. So let's see if the harmonic minor fits all the way through, or is it just going to fit over that line. So if you're going to be thinking about playing around minor scales, then what you want to do basically is natural minor for the, uh, the first line and whenever you get that F sharp minor 7 flat 5 to B7 to E minor, then you switch to the harmonic minor, uh, which only rarely affects those notes, uh, the rest of the notes are the same. So that's one approach, simply stick with minor scales. Um, Another approach is the E minor pentatonic, uh, which starting on an E D string. So it's um, one three open one three and then taking it up. Which is the same obviously as the G major pentatonic, which I bang on about an awful lot. Um, but it's relative minor of that. So let's hear just playing the E minor pentatonic. far better than either of the other two. Uh, even though we're still using the D natural all the time, because it's now forming itself into pentatonic phrases, which are always musical and always kind of hold together, this is a far stronger um, way of approaching uh, phrasing and it's, it's always going to do better than approaching it as just minor scales. So I think that really works well. But better still is going to be the E minor blue scale. So to, to that pentatonic, we're going to add a flattened fifth. That one. That one. So there's 
three B flats you can put in. So let's hear just playing the blues scale. it gives you a lot more freedom and those bent notes really bring out a kind of emotion so out of those four approaches I think the E minor blues scale is by far the best but that's not to say you should stick with just one because all four approaches work um, in their right place now uh, another way of approaching this is by looking more closely at the chords and Rather than taking it chord by chord, think of it as a whole set of 2-5-1s. Now I do have a video all about 2-5-1s, which I'll put a link up to, hopefully, right here. Um, so if you look at the first three chords, uh, where the 1 is G, the 2 is A minor, the 5 is D7, and the 1. So, um, those three chords kind of fit together as a natural unit and any phrase that you start on the A minor 7 can lead towards the G. That kind of thing. Um, the F sharp minor 7, B7, E minor is another 2-5-1 but this is a minor 2-5-1. So we're going... We're going from F sharp minor as the 2, B7 as the 5, and E minor as the 1. So they, they again fit together as a unit. Then we've got the A minor 7, D7, G, G major 7 again. The C major 7 is just like a little pause, it doesn't really do very much in this context. Then we've got the, um, the minor 2, 5, 1 again, and again, and then the A minor D7, G7 again. And then the next one is a slightly dressed up um, minor 2, 5, 1. It just happens to be that little B7 in. And then we've got the rundown, um, which we'll um, talk about a bit later. And then a 5 and a 1. So, uh, just think of it as 2, 5, 1s. Let's try and phrase it that way. a good approach to this tune because it's just 251 after 251. Um, let's just look at that rundown. You could if you wanted play something fancy like um, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't recommend that uh, unless you, you want to learn something fancy maybe hear someone playing a fancy thing like that. You could just play the descending line dress it up something like that which would be quite nice 
or you can just treat the whole thing as E minor. Let's just hear what that sounds like. I'm going to play, I think it's the last eight bars. Basically, I'm just playing a simple uh, E minor phrase, and those chords are kind of fighting against it. But the chords are doing the work, so that's making what you do sound interesting. Or if you want, just be really simple, uh, let's just play an E. thing to say about um, jazz tunes in minors is that the uh, minor 9 substitution is really nice, by which I mean if you're in E then hold an F sharp over the E minor um, and uh, it gives a really strong effect. I'm going to play a little solo where I do a lot of that on most of the E minors. So any jazz minor tune, uh, try that, um, minor nine, it, it always works. So um, these are a lot of different approaches to actually uh, <laughs> making it really easy. The most musical approach is to think chord by chord um, and make the most of, each, of what each chord has to offer. But um, I think it's always a good idea to find the simplest way through and develop your ideas as you go along. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to look at the Autumn Leaves Melody, then um, in a couple of weeks time I'm going to be launching a Patreon page and I'm going to be putting a few of my videos exclusively on there and Autumn Leaves Melody will be one of the first ones to go on there. Um, but I'll tell you about that when that comes out. Uh, I'll play you out. Thank you for listening and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.